Hyde Park Corner is the centre of London from where all measurements to and from the city are made. It is overlooked by Number One London, also known as Apsley House, which was given by a grateful nation to the Duke of Wellington, Britain's greatest general. Looking on from the other side of the road, back to his Apsley House, Wellington's own statue supported by four soldiers from England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales. In the middle of this verdant roundabout is the Wellington Arch, designed by Decimus Burton. Originally, it supported a colossal and much derided equestrian statue of the Iron Duke himself by Matthew Wyatt. After decades of controversy, it was removed to Aldershot and Burton's original design for a quadriga with peace in her chariot, holding an olive branch in one hand and a laurel wreath in the other, guns and standards in the boot, was erected in 1912. A dinner party for eight was held in one of the horses' bellies to celebrate the occasion. If this statue of peace looks surprisingly like victory, then the effect is considerably sobered by the surrounding monuments to the pity of war. The black steel tank trap of the New Zealand Memorial, as if on a beach at low tide, is complemented by the Australian silent waterfall over the names and towns of battles. The heart-wrenching bulk of the Royal Artillery Memorial, perhaps the most moving in London, is matched by the waspish bluntness of the Machine Gun Corps. A statue of David atop the quotation, Saul has slain his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. At the top of Constitution Hill stands the gates commemorating the fallen of the Indian subcontinent, Africa and the Caribbean. Although it is positioned between Hyde Park and St. James's, Knightsbridge and Piccadilly, Hyde Park Corner is a surprisingly serene and contemplative space. <laughs>